From worship to stoning. This is the second half of the first missionary journey of Paul. It started off with them going to Cyprus, which was the birthplace of uh, Barnabas and, and, and John Mark. It was a safe place to go. It would be the natural place. Uh, but when Paul kind of takes over the team here, he takes them onto the mainland and takes that two-week walk up the mountain, a rough path, up to another Antioch. Antioch that's in that is in Galatia. Now this is Paul's old stomping ground. You see, it's along the trade route that goes from the Antioch back in Syria onto Tarsus, to Derby, to Lystra, to Iconium, back to this Antioch and points west. Paul, being a tent maker, uh, probably worked this entire route and was very familiar with it. You see in these two stories that uh, they start a method of ministry that they were to keep the entire time. They would first go to the synagogue. This was a natural place for them to go. Paul was a good speaker. He was an educated Pharisee. He was an established rabbi. And, and on top of that, he was still a... a, uh, a uh, he still kept the law. He was a practicing Jew. And being from, being from Galilee and Judea, they, they could bring news, bring gossip of what was happening. For them, the synagogue was a natural place. They could go to the Jew first. But also, there were, there were Gentiles that were there as well. So that, that gave them an inroad into the inn into the entire city. As far as I know, Paul kept this pattern up except for two times. Uh, when they get to Lystra, they are mistaken to be two gods, Zeus and Hermes. Now, if we, uh, we don't know what Barnabas and Saul look like, but if this is any in, in indication they said that Barnabas was Zeus and Paul was Hermes. Well, Zeus was tall, upright, handsome. Hermes was short, a little bit hunchback, but a, but a very good speaker. And they looked at these two men along with the miracle that had happened, Paul being the speaker, and they identified them as those two gods. And for good reason. In their uh, tradition, in their, in their superstition, uh, uh, Zeus and Hermes had visited their area before. They came looking for hospitality and went to a thousand residents and no one welcomed, welcomed them into their home or recognized them. They finally came to an old couple who welcomed them in and took care of them and provided for their needs. So the two gods struck the area with a flood, killed everybody except this couple. And after everything was done, the couple's home became a temple to Zeus with a golden roof and pillars and marble, and the old couple became priests. Well, the residents were not going to make that mistake twice. They immediately started worshiping these two gods, at least who they thought were two gods. Well, when when word got out that uh, they weren't gods, well, uh, then it turned to the stoning. Paul, later on in his writings, referred to a time when he died and went to the third heaven, saw things that he couldn't repeat. Most scholars uh, think that this is when that happened, that when he was stoned, he actually did die. And they took his body out of the city and threw it onto the trash heap. And everybody, from the people who were doing the stoning to the, to the Christians, both believed he was dead. And most scholars think that he was. But then he came back. And I believe his life was changed. He now had died. He had seen the other side. 
The fear was gone. The longing to go back was there. He was fearless from this time on. He was before. But now, uh, you see, he wasn't far from his home. Uh, being rejected of John Mark, of, uh, of all of the difficulties they were having, and probably Barnabas not really being on total on board for what was going on here, uh, he could have easily just walked down the road a little bit farther and he'd been home, going back to uh, tent making. But this happened, and I think it changed his life and changed his ministry. Well, from here, they go back to Antioch. And we'll tell you more about that when we give you more insights on the story.